So, uh, super lucky to be join, joined by the captain of the Republic of Ireland, Ken. How are you? I'm good. Hello, world. Hello, everyone in the world. Uh, so uh, it's super fun to have you on. Uh, this is going to be a tough pitch from you. Uh, I know you're coming into mm. this. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Uh, <laughs> number one, uh, are you well? Is everything good? I'm good. I'm all good. A few of the team were a bit of a lurgy the last few weeks. There's something going around again, I think. Well, it's made you a bit nervous. Well, no, I'm just worried somebody will get sick before we go. And we've no subs, so... Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, so let's talk about that first. So, um, uh, like Republic of Ireland, so like the, just people who aren't aware of the southern part of Ireland. Um, what's the tournament scene like? What's also the community like? Like, um, uh, is it big? Like, t talk to me about it. Like, for people who don't know at home. Yeah. Um, the scene, the old Warhammer scene was probably a bit bigger. It's probably a bit more all over Ireland. Mm. We used to do tournaments in Galway, Limerick, Cork. It's very much in Ireland at the minute. It's Dublin and the North, and we play each other all the time. Mm. <clears throat> we have a lot of one days. We have less two day events than I would like, but that's people finding time to commit. It's not the same as England where you have two day events every every weekend. Multiple, yeah, yeah. So I mean, and like pre uh, the end times, we used to travel a lot. We go to a lot. We go to Sheffield Slaughter and go to a lot of those things. Mm. So I'd like to get back to that, but then. Uh, COVID hit and put a kibosh and all that. So that's true. Now that everything's back to normal, next year we're hoping that we get get to travel a bit more. We have, have a you, lot of good players. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, has you, have you seen that your scene has been growing? Like a lot of the other players have been saying, that their scenes have been growing, or is that not something you think has um, been happening? Uh, like you know, Mick. Yeah, they, they opened the shop. We have a lot of new players. I mean, we've only two players from last year's Worlds on the team this year. Wow. Because a lot of people, some people are going to Australia for the summer. Some people are getting married. Some people are having kids. There's a lot going on in people's lives. So we have a lot of new players. We actually have a fairly international team. We'll get onto that in a minute, I guess. Mm. But everyone who's on the team lives lives in Ireland, works in Ireland. So we're, we're all local. So we all get to play each other every weekend, every weekend. And we're trying to we're trying to get as much games in as we can within the confines of real life getting in the way sometimes that seems fair so uh would you say um like the uh like if you wanted to come over to ireland to play some games we'd be we'd be he heading straight to the capital sorry say that again if, if we Where like if, if people if people wanted to travel over to ireland to play games is there like uh, tournaments is there is there many tournaments to take take part in yeah uh, exploding dice up in the north they run events uh the guys in the world gaming they they run a lot of events mm. so There'll be the Irish Masters coming up this sometime in the winter, I think. We used to get a few travellers for that. You, I think you covered it one time. Yeah, so. yeah, it was, it was wicked. Like, honestly, a yeah. very lovely... I mean, event. if you want to come to have good fun events, this is the country to come to. Yeah. It's a bit expensive right now. That is a problem. Getting a hotel for people is not going to be easy, so... Okay, that's fair. But, okay, so, but, so talk to me about putting a team together. Okay, so uh, I wasn't initially the captain. Mm. Nathan was captain this year. Mm. Then Nathan had to buy. Nathan has a wedding in the summer, so I could, uh, then a guy Jim was meant to take over, and then he had a kid, and then he couldn't go. So then I got handed the captaincy at the last minute. So in the last two three months, we decided were we even going to send the team because we were struggling to get enough players that could commit. Mm. Like there's three or four players that if, if we could have got them, they'd be on the team, but they can't go. Mm. So we've because of the t the scene is expanding, we've been able to bring in three or four other players to make up get us back up. So we we only decided about two months ago that we'd actually go. So we then made the commitment that right, right, if we're going to go, let's let's have a go and go properly, and let's try and tone ourselves down a little bit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, because how did the team do last year? Okay, so uh, I think we came last, if I remember rightly. I think maybe. I I mean, I didn't keep yeah. track. Uh, but yeah. maybe. Now, in fairness, there's there's one thing that happened during our team. So we, I think we we got one loss of one of the players straight away because they couldn't yeah. play their game because yeah. they were uh, indisposed for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't great. Uh, if I'm being honest, last year when we went, we had two dropouts right at the last minute. Mm. They were our top two players. They couldn't go because of sickness or uh, somebody had something on it. They had to go to it at the last minute. 
So there wasn't as much practice put in last year. Mm. So the, we went with just the idea, but let's just go and enjoy ourselves. We were coming out of lockdown. Ireland had the strictest lockdown in all of Europe and for the longest. So we were caged up for a long time. So a lot of people, I think, just let their hair down if they had any. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think that's fair. Because I, I think, but I think like uh, whether or not that they um, they went and had like a super adventure, like any of the teams last year, I think one of the lessons uh, that people have said that they took away from last year is that they should be more prepped. And I was wondering, like, you know, like it sounds like it's been a bit tumultuous, the the setup for the team. Have you um, have you been able to like rein it together now and then like get everyone on page and, and prepped? Because because, you know, just how much work goes into it. So I was wondering what your thoughts. Yeah, were. I've been doing this a long time, like from previous ETCs back in the old world. So, mm. yeah, no, it, it's a lot of work uh, getting people to fill in matrices isn't easy. Mm. The lads, uh, they don't like doing their homework, but I kind of force them to do it. So, you know. But we've we we committed early enough to armies. We had to make a decision early. We're sitting there looking at going. When we first looked at it, you know, was KO any good as an army? When it first came out, people were like, mm, maybe. Gloom by gates, we knew were strong. Beasts, we thought they'd been nerfed. Were they going to still be good? Mm. So then we thought, right, we don't have really have those players on those armies. So let's see what Slanish and Corn looks like when it comes out. Mm. And I like Corn. Floody likes Slanish. There are armies we've played before. We figured that going with them would be stronger than us picking up one of those other armies. Mm. So we're one of the few teams that don't have KO, that don't have Gloom Spike, that don't have Beast. Yeah, but you do have a bunch like of... Have them. If they'd have come out earlier, if the books had come out three months beforehand, mm. we'd have had time to nail them down better, but we didn't have the time, so... Yeah, do you think the uh, do you think the release schedule is like has been quite impactful on you as a team, especially? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there was a vote just when the OBR and the Soulbright Glaze Soulbright book came out. Yeah, Team England asked, "Can we bring the Soulbright?" And everyone was like, "No, you can't." <laughs> <laughs> there was a cut off date, and they're all playtesters, so everyone was like, "Come on, lads!" Yeah, you you already know how this works. Yeah, yeah, that, se- right. that seems a bit keen. Um, yeah, so, that... I mean, in fairness to words, the organizers they said, Here's the line in the sand if, if a book doesn't come out by this date, it's not common. Okay, and I, I'm fine with that because at least everyone's on the same page, everyone has the same amount of information. Yeah, that's that seems to make a lot of sense. That seems good. Uh, you said that you had a bunch of uh, we're gonna get to all the players in a minute. Like, you said you had a bunch of like younger players though, or at least new players to the scene. Sorry, has it been quite mm-hmm. fun with your experience? Uh, kind of like l- prepping them for international worlds has been an eye opener for them. Yeah, big time. A lot, of, a lot of younger, newer players. They look at Age of Sigmar, and they, even if they didn't play the old game, they're still playing in the old mindset of charge across the table and kill the other guy's army and win, right? Mm-hmm. And Age of Sigmar is not really about that. Nope. And it's about teaching them patience. I think is it's a bit like being Master Splinter with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, they're trying to take you. Teach- God, sorry, you were saying? Yeah, you're just trying to teach these people, you know, play play for the long, long round game. Don't lose too much stuff too early. Trade properly. Get into the late game. Win it in the late game. That yeah. sort of thing. Are they doing well at picking that up? Bio thing that people have to pick up as well. Yes, that's challenging for a lot of people. Are they are they doing well at picking that up? Uh, they're getting better at it, yeah. And some people are surprising me about how, how well they've improved in the last, even the last month or so. So. Oh wow. Okay, that's great. Because I think I, it's pretty good for you as a community to have a roster of newer players and also like younger oh, yeah, players. Older guys are going to retire, like so. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It seems to make sense to. It seems to make sense to like start developing a, a like a younger player base. Even if it doesn't work mm-hmm. out for this event, it'll work out in the future events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder if that's. Like, I think strategy. we'd be Go on. we'd be much better prepared for Six Nations this winter and Worlds next year because of the Met is going to settle now for a year. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah, it's going okay. to be a true test. Like I personally think that Ko and Gates in particular are just they need to be nerfed. They will be nerfed probably in about two to three weeks time, right? Yeah, yeah, they will. But we won't be taking that nerf into Worlds. No. So having those armies is going to be a huge advantage for every team that brought them, which is why most people brought them, I guess. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. That is going to be a big advantage, especially if they knew that it was going to be that strong way before. I think that's a fair point. Yeah. Okay, so uh, talk to me about the team. Who's in the team? Why are they in the team? What are they playing? 
Yeah. What they like All as right. people. I'll start in reverse order of age then, I guess. Okay, so, yeah. Our youngest team member is Dave. He's a true dub. He's on uh he's on the disciples of Zinch, so his is a real KFC army where the, the chickens uh they fry you with this one. So, <laughs> reverse KFC is great. <laughs> yeah. So he, he he's he's on the summoning train, he's gonna he's bringing a lot of big birds in his uh this flight case with him, you know. Oof, that's a lot to pack. So Dave's he's our newest member to Age of Sigmar in Ireland. He he actually came to us uh with us to Six Nations. Mm. Then the last year he was like a non playing coach just to get used to the whole thing, see how everything works, see how the pairings worked, see how the match up process, the running around helping people doing timeouts and stuff. So he's got up to speed real quick. He's he's really good with that list. I think he'll do well. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay, good. All right. Who we got then next? Our next? Then his mate Johnny. He's uh he's another dub. He he works in Cabries. He's uh he's on flesh here courts. Okay. So we wanted we wanted a good solid tanky list. Mm. And we think this is it. And people haven't played a lot of Feck lately, right? Uh not like yes. They have played Feck, but like not in the grand scheme of things there is like players around the world who are playing it but not a lot um, but when they do play it they do tend to do quite well but like it's very yeah, few it's... very few people yeah so we're hoping on the surprise factor there that might scare a few people they just, they, what does this matchup do they don't know yeah i think there's uh, there's definitely a couple of places it's very popular in canada um uh at the minute and it's also been quite popular in is it in australia no i think it's been north america north america have got that like at the moment they've been playing it quite a bit uh but i think that's pretty much where i've seen it bc play not many other places mm. so yeah so next up then we have miles so miles is an american living in dublin okay and he actually knows quite a few of uh, team usa Ooh. so we're going to be getting the the lowdown secrets on them so nice he's Good. our inside man as it were because <laughs> you're paired to get well, we'll talk about that after you're paired into USA but we'll yeah, talk about that so after Miles is on the the old maggot kin of Nurgle nice no he's not on the big spam fly list he's got a few of them but it's not that list that was last year our guy Dave played that he actually did probably best on our team with that list mm. that was really strong very but strong with nerfs and changes to the meta that list doesn't really work as much but so we've gone with some that's kind of in the middle a bit more maneuverable and a bit more it's got a bit more to it, so okay. We think that might surprise people as well because I think a lot of people won't won't have brought Magikin or didn't think that Magikin were going to be a thing. There's a yeah. lot of disc uh, there's a lot of ignoring ward saves, but if you can dodge that in the pairings, yeah, and you do get you to manage that in the pairings, right? Like you can yeah. just make it so that that doesn't happen, which is good. Well, you, you try. <laughs> <It doesn't laughs> <always work. laughs> so he's the first foreigner on our team. So the next one we have a. Uh, we have Richie Santos Deban. We have a Spaniard on our team. Oh, amazing. So he's he's been living in Dublin for 20, 30 years. So he's been here a long time. So he's on uh, Night Hunt. Again, that's an army that I thought there would be more of. Yeah, similarly, uh, the, the German uh, captain earlier said the same because they have a Night Hunt army and they were also surprised there weren't many Night Hunt armies. There are certain armies just can't play this. Yeah. It's probably less than it used to be but we figure it can get in there and do damage that's good the deep strike and 30 uh, chain doodads whatever they're called they can they do a lot of work a lot a lot yeah yeah, yeah. like it, like they're they're legitimately a challenging army if you don't have the tools to deal with them yeah yeah so next up who we got next so uh I guess we'll go with Floody next. So Floody was a guy who was he was on the team to come last year. He couldn't go because he was on well. So he's back in the team. He played Slanish a lot in second edition. Mm -hmm. He's he had to park that for a while <laughs> because that army got nerfed into oblivion. It's a bit too good. So we're now it's back. So we we looked at it and we thought Slanish is powerful, as you can see by how many Bisbar archers there are on the world, right? Yep. So a lot that's a solid list and with a good player that's gonna i think do damage okay yeah i think that's i think good. i i, I think all the yeah all the slash armies being similar is quite interesting yeah well they've all they've all gone what is it pretenders and pretenders and, and, and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's impressive shooting 
which I think is bad for the game, actually. I think there's too much shooting in the game right now. I think that's super fair. I think especially if, like, there aren't... Uh, there isn't any competent um, terrain maps, but even then, uh, it's a lot because Age of Sigmar is a pretty mobile game. It's not like uh, you know, forty k sometimes has like some pretty slow moving units that also shoot. Uh, Age of Sigmar's mm. got like, guess what? You shoot and you run and shoot and move eight inches. You like that's a lot, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The Thirty inch threat range on those blitz barbs is you have to watch it. Yeah, yeah, you do, and it's a lot of shots. Yeah. yeah. The funny thing as well is the maps at Worlds are kind of... We're still up in the air about what is going to be on a tabletop. I don't know if you know this. Oh, no? So there's there's maps, pre, pre-maps for each each scenario. Yeah. And there'll be two forests on every map. Yeah. And then there's a num- there's numbered circles that go one to six on different positions in the map. And the bigger the circle, the bigger the terrain piece will be. Yeah. I guess because the guys have to make so much terrain, they don't know how much of everything there's going to be. Yeah, that, be, that, so they that don't makes know sense. If there's going to be enough to be two garrisons for every table or two impassable. They don't know, and we don't know. Okay. So you're you're playing practice games where you don't really know is a garrison going to come into play in this match or not. Okay. Because it'll depend on your table when you get there, depending on what row you're on. So, so that's a bit difficult for the pairings because you have the maps, and the maps are really only telling you where the forests are, and that's all you know. Okay, all right. Okay, that's and interesting. And they changed the forest. Just so you know, they've changed the forest rules as well. To, so it's only one inch you can see through it. Yes, yeah, it's pretty much what. Like, yeah, I think I, I mean, yeah, because normally it's three inches for people at home who don't know. Yeah. Uh, but that makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, they don't really have an impact. I think. Yeah, because if your if your wood is too small and you stand in the middle, you could still be seen. It. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, it's the right decision. I would just have the whole thing, like like. Yeah, get rid of the one inch and say if you're inside it, you can't be seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd do the whole thing, but like you know, like I think it's I think making it so it's uh, we had uh, Madigan on earlier, and I think a lot a lot of thought and time has been put into a lot of these rules decisions, like a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree uh, with that. The, the change to that definitely, but yeah. as you say, I'd rather it was just zero inch. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That'd be great. So our next player is uh, James. James is our coach as well. We we, we couldn't bring a non-playing coach, but one okay. of the guys who who would like to do it is he's free from work now, so he'd like to go. So I'm going to try and ask Morris if we can actually add a non-playing coach to our team, pay for the ticket, or whatever, and see if, see what they say. That's that'd be nice. That'd be yeah, nice. Just it, to take a, a bit of, of pressure off. To, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we'll yeah. see what they say. If they don't, if they, if they don't, they don't. But he'd like to come, and he can only do, he can only do two of the three days, but. Two days is better than zero days. So having any uh, having anyone to take a bit of pressure off would be super useful. Yeah. So yeah, James is our he's a playing coach at the for, for now anyway. So James James and I used to be on the old ETC team. James hasn't played a huge amount of AOS. He's he's a war machine player and an old warmer player. He's good at all games. He's really fast. He put people under pressure quickly. So he's on the fire slayers. So he's going to I think do damage. People have I think I was shocked at how many Fire Slayers armies there were, actually. I thought it would be a bit lower. But oh, I think everyone has realised that they're really good in teams. Yeah, I think so. I think I mean, they've done pretty well in singles as well. It's been very difficult to, to ignore, especially some like higher-profile events earlier on in the year. Mm. We saw Fire Slayers do quite well several times. Like Sometimes yeah. we saw like, a Fire Slayer 1 and 2, and I think that picked up a lot of like media attention. Yeah, yeah. like... I think this GHB has made them way more powerful. If you look at last GHB, it was all Magma Dross, five Magma Dross around yeah. the people. Yeah. Now it's just Flame Keepers and characters sitting one inch behind. You can't kill me. Tons of lads. So many lads. Yeah, yeah it's really it's interesting. So many wounds and so many saves and so many ward saves. It's just like, good luck. It's kind of like Night so then... If you roll well, then you, like on the saves, then you just don't die. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it can be swingy, but it can be swingy in your favor or so yeah yeah we're hoping for luck of the irish you know let's go <laughs> yeah. so then next on the team is mick wendell mm-hmm. in the chat right now there. shout out mick yeah. thanks very much for subscribing so uh mick's on easy mode he's he got the lrl <laughs> nice so he's on the technique though so uh that list we all know what it is it's too powerful I don't like LRL. I hate playing them. I, I think that total eclipse and shooting is just zero fun for people. Agreed. Please take it out of the game. Mm-hmm. 
But while it's there and everyone else is using it, guess what? <laughs> we have to We're use using it, it. Yeah, of course. It's like weapons of mass destruction. You need your your Carter threat, you know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Just, just two two Lumineth players eyeballing each other. I think you need that. Like ultimately, yeah. I think Worlds is a forum where you're allowed to take whatever you want without any criticism. I think. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Once the rules pack is done, you try and bring the best thing that fits into the rules pack. Hundred percent. Yeah. And then there's me. I'm on corn. Uh, Reapers of Vengeance. Two big dogs. Let's go. <laughs> okay, that's pretty interesting. So, like, um, I, I I assume you will have looked through all the corn lists by now. There was quite like a few different takes on the corn armies at the event. How did you feel about that? Yeah, so I looked at it, and there's two ways to go with corn. There's people go, it's mortals or demons. Mine is a mix. Mm. But I think the real question is, do you want to go tanky or killy? There's a like take America's list. He's got what. 60 warriors yeah on foot so he's slow when he's grinding yeah and he kills you when you kill him right yeah yeah mm. my army's more fast it's more maneuverable it's got big dogs it's got skull cannons it's summoning the summoners off the chain if you do it right i don't think a lot of people are keyed into that no i don't think so either i think it seems stronger yeah. like it, it is stronger than it seems when you read it yeah so yeah, yeah i'm going to summon lots of blood layers and people can enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> My army's designed to, you have to kill me, and then I'm, I'm happy that you're killing me. Because so. I'm getting points. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, so that's our, that's our team. Okay, that's good. A load of new people. How, have you been working on trying to build like the team cohesion together? I mean, we're, we're all pretty close. Like me, James, Mick, Floody, uh, who else? Uh, Richie, we've all know, we've all played Old World Warhammer. Our floody was 40k and Flames of War. So we've all been to a lot of ATCs. The new guys, I guess, are Miles, Johnny and Dave. And mm. like Dave's real new to the tournament scene, but he's real eager to learn. Mm. So it's, those are the young people that you want to go. I just want to be a sponge and absorb everything. Yeah, and learn. And learn and just take everything in the right way. Johnny the same. Um, Miles. I didn't know Miles up until two months ago. I hadn't, hadn't met him. Mm. But uh, he's obviously been playing a lot of tournaments in the US because he's played a lot of the guys. So he knows he knows what's going on. So he knows how to play. Now, unfortunately, their team knows him as well. So, yeah, so that's an issue. That's an issue. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk well, about that, shall we? We're not going to turn three or halfway through the match, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about that because you are obviously... Um, uh, you are uh, paired into Team USA uh, for the first matchup, which while USA didn't do super well last year, I think that they've necessarily, they, I think they've stepped their game up a lot. Um, uh, like, big matchup round one, and obviously they're going to get a lot of media attention. How do you feel about the matchup? Or how does the team feel about the matchup? Um, well, see, if I was America, they're, they're, they're hoping to do well, right? Yeah. So, if they stumble against us, that's them out, because I don't think I don't think people have really mentioned yet, but the scoring systems have changed for this year as well. Uh, they yeah they have. So, not only is it a lot harder to get a twenty nil than it used to be, but they've also lifted the cap. So the cap used to be sixty a hundred. Mm. It's now forty one twenty. Yeah. So your big nations like England, France, whoever, they're like quite likely to one twenty round one. If we hold out USA to eat it all, that's a lot of them that they'll have to claw back. A lot of points. But it also means so, it also also means like um, it's it's interesting. Moving the cap is 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 a dynamic change in in the game. Um, and it I feels... think changing both at the same time was maybe too much. I would have adjusted the scoring, which they've done now, so that mm. you need seventeen plus to get the twenty nil. I'd have done yeah. that first, and then if you see that everything's too bunched together, then you can increase the cap. But I feel that there's going to be three or four nations run away with it, and there's going to be a lot of people down near the bottom, which we'll be fighting that probably. <laughs> <laughs> we are hoping not to be though, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, we have we have mission statements of like what we want to achieve. Yeah. So obviously, first is not to come last. Good. Well done. Good. Love that. That's our that's our primary goal, right? Then secondary goal is probably 
is to win a round. We didn't win a round last year. So win so one round. Win round. Just baby steps. Yeah. Just okay, just do baby yeah. steps. So then win not come round. last, win a round. Then we want to not come last amongst the home nations from the Six Nations. Ooh. So we want to finish above Northern Ireland or Scotland or Sweden. Or, maybe or England. England. Or England. Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. Who do you think you've got the best chance of coming above out of the out of no. the home nations? I think also Northern Ireland. Uh, we're at a similar level. I'd say there's four te- players on their team and four players on our team that are on the same level. Mm. And that's close to who would win those matchups. Mm. I think our newer players, I think, might be stronger than some of their... Like, I think they have a ringer in their team that they had to use to fill in at the last minute. Okay. So I think we might do slightly better than Northern Ireland. I think, though, I think from playing against Scotland, I think we can beat Scotland. Wales, it depends. They have good players. They pull them from a, from England, so you know they can. They're getting the subs. <laughs> they get a lot. Team England. Um, we'll probably not play England. Let's be realistic. Mm. So, if we finish, if we finish in the bottom, the top half of the bottom half, I'd be extremely happy. Okay, that's good. I mean, that's a, it's a, it's good to have the goals like that, right? Like, and yeah. and like you say, you you might not be the kings, but you could be the king makers. And that's exactly. that's what I'm saying. Like I think our round one matchup against the USA will have a big repercussion if we can if we can do well on that round, even if we lose small. Yeah. Then they only win small. That's true. That's true. I think a lot and of the teams always... need to hold back. Like I know the Germans would like to beat the French, but if anything, like I know that they want to they crush. Want to lose, right? Yeah, they want to crush uh, like France's chance of the podium. Like in round one, yeah. so like I, I think that's a really clever way of thinking about it as well, because it gives you a goal even if you end up on yeah. the back foot. Yeah. So yeah. If the cap now is forty. Normally it would have been sixty. So if yeah. we if we get sixty or seventy against America, that'd be really good. If we get eighty plus, amazing. Amazing. Okay. I mean, I've been looking at the looking at their lists and their players. I mean, there's one guy, Bill, who he doesn't even know how to write an army list. He picks <laughs> nonsense things like. <laughs> And then there's a guy on YouTube, some French lad. I mean, he's meant to be on before me, but he ran scared, so he's on after me, right? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't sure. Plus, he's French, so yeah, like, exactly, what's he right? doing on the USA well, my team? Is French, so I can't say anything bad. Uh, okay, no, my apologies. <laughs> By the way, you've just had it confirmed that you can bring your uh, non-playing coach, um, and you can email the uh, Alliance people for some lunch vouchers, just so you know. All right, excellent. Yeah, I'll tell John. John, hopefully he can still do it and hasn't booked a holiday scheme or something again. <laughs> uh, okay, that's great. So, um, uh, obviously, you're playing the USA. Uh, are there any other teams that you would like to play? Um, going back to old ETCs, we've always enjoyed playing against Team Denmark, Team Serbia, uh, Team Austria. We always had a lot of good games with. Again, they're different players now, but similar vibe. Mm. What I will say is, coming from the old world, the, some of the teams are a lot better than they, they used to be. Okay. They're a lot more chilled, a lot more friendly, a lot more less antagonistic, I would say. There are certain teams in the old world you wouldn't want to play, like Poland, Italy. They were renowned for being difficult, uncomfortable. Uh, but, how uh, do, how would you say that the uh, the the difference between the two, like obviously coming from like Warhammer Fantasy Battles and the ETC, uh, how would you compare like the professionalism, the uh, the the community versus that? Well, I'm not saying that this is better. Like, what's your what's your thoughts on it? How have you how have you well, thought I, about I it? If you if you look back, if you, if you go back, what is it? It's nearly ten years now. Twenty fourteen was the last time I think I played. Yeah, that when I, before they pulled the trigger. Uh, big countries like Poland, Germany, England, Denmark, those guys put in a lot of work. They were all doing this 50 games a week. Crazy stuff. Yeah. So I think they set the template for it and AOS has picked up on it and maybe not known about it, but have reinvented the same wheel without knowing, if you know what I mean. I, I think the people who they've reinvented got, it... the same steps that everyone comes to. You go, if you want to get good at this, you have to put the work in, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think also like uh, like we're too late now, but we've ended up in a structural position the same as we did previously because the same the same people who were involved in it at the start, like Six Nations and, and ETC, uh, like started that ball rolling again, 
Um, and I think there's some really good conversations about like, you know, why is it eight people teams? You know, there's a bunch of stuff. Like, why isn't why don't the nations have like two or three teams? Why can't you have a couple of teams from your nation versus uh, eight? There's some great convos uh, to have oh, yeah. later down the line. Um, but replicating the system that like like I, all love to everyone in the past, but I don't think that they hit the golden answer turn one. Like they were like, we'll do this. This is the answer. So I think it's mm. worth looking at in the future. But obviously that it's we it's a year by year development, right? Very much like your team, year by year development. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, you d some teams you did want you don't want to play and you do want to play. Uh, is there anyone you're definitely gonna beat? Come on, it's got to be one team you're definitely gonna beat. Well, definitely beat Northern Ireland. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and I'm from Northern Ireland, so I can say that, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we have them now. They would have beat us last year if they'd have been there. Well, I think this year, I think. I mean, I may actually try and set up a pre, uh, a practice session, like in Ashes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, even before we leave, just to get it in early. Yeah. Yeah, and then but, maybe do a game when we get there. But then we arrive late on Thursday, so I don't think we have time to do any of that. So. Oh, okay. I was going to say, um, uh, because obviously with the Ashes and stuff like that happening, um, I was wondering if you wanted to pick like a random team that you were you were now forever going to have like a match with every year. Like I don't know we used to Czech do that Republic. with Denmark. We used to do that with so, Denmark. We used to do it with Denmark. One year we did the practice game and we beat them, and then they went on to win worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Heartbreak. <laughs> what yeah, a yeah. moment uh okay that's great um uh yeah, I, I mean we don't know any of the current danish teams so maybe sweden or we'll we'll see when we get there maybe serbia yeah serbia are super fun uh if i wanted to i can drink rocky so it's all good all right perfect uh if you uh if we wanted to follow along with team ireland uh how would we do so like how would we do that um i think there's a twitter i don't have it yet i'm gonna get the handle off nathan or uh Mick and I'm going to start throwing a lot of shade at Team America. Good. The Spice Weasel is going to come out, and I'm going to good let the spice flow. So let them go. Get this going. Yeah, they, they all they will they, that team itself, and also uh, that community will have a load of fun with that. I think you should because that's an exciting round one. Like I don't know how, mm -hmm. how did you guys how did the team react when you found out you were paired into the USA? I was in the gym and I was sitting. I was literally sitting in the machine watching on my phone, watching yep. you roll dice over and over again. So sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I played a real game. Well, so I was like, cool. oh, we would have liked maybe somebody a little bit lower down the rankings, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, but I understand. Now we get our, our uh, David and Goliath moment, right? You do. They're under nice. huge pressure to not fuck up against us. They are, and they I think are. you should stream it. I think it'll be a quality stream because if we beat America, they're not going to get back on stream. That's true. That's true. I think the uh, the other the other thing is, uh, and I talked about this a lot. Uh, quite a few of the Americans are very susceptible. Like I know this is a very different Irish team to last year's Irish team, uh, but the Americans are very susceptible to uh, being brought into the drinking culture, um, and then that's dangerous for both of your two teams. However, the match goes, going into round two with twists and turns and lurkers below. Well, what we can do is we can take them to the bar, get them a pint and a chaser. And then they won't be able to handle that, and we will, <laughs> right? Because they can't okay. drink soup, right? I used to live in America, so I know this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so they got no that's chance. What we can we can get them drunk and stay sober. You know, so that's the answer. All right. Well, there you go. I think I think that's where you want to trash talk him because I think that I don't know if there's I don't know if they've got the energy to turn that down. They've only yeah. got the energy to accept that. I think you can't turn down a, a shot Irish whiskey from. A, if, as an american if you're an irish american in particular right so. oh, yeah exactly yeah stop telling them our secrets apparently that's the thing all right well uh thank you so much for uh coming on uh ken is there anyone you'd like to shout out who's been super helpful in organizing stuff yeah there's a couple of lads uh john john jim james a couple of lads uh, who couldn't couldn't make the team this year but they've they've been helping out in the background running running other lists against us to try and help us mm. so Hopefully they can do a bit more now for the next few weeks. They've been they've been a bit busy lately, but they've been helping out a lot. Uh, Underworlds have been letting us do practice events at their their shop. That's been great. Everyone on the team has been putting in a lot more effort than they, they have done previously. So we've got a lot of practice games in. So thanks to everyone for stepping up. And as long as we can get to bed early, I think we'll do okay. All right, that's perfect. And don't forget, our clarion call is not last place. 
That's all we got to do. Exactly. Not last place. <laughs> we get a banner. We get a big flag with not coming last on it. Right? <laughs> You've only like you literally can't do worse. So that's like huge, right? Just yeah. straight up. Okay. All right. Well, uh, a massive congratulations, uh, Ken. It's been lovely talking to you as well. Uh, thanks so much. I can't wait to see uh, some banter online, but also can't wait to see you guys at Worlds. Uh, thanks yeah, we'll loads. See you on Thursday, yeah. You're there early, right? You're there from the Monday, is it? Or... From the Monday, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seven games of Warhammer. Well, I'm not playing any, so no, no. But you, you know, like Ryan and people like that, you play. I'm just going to play both events. No, <laughs> I mean, I feel like it like loosens them up for the teams. Like, I think uh, it would melt my brain, and I would just be a cabbage by the end of it. Like, yeah, I, I might also do that. I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's been super lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. If anyone would like to get in touch with them, obviously, I'll include the uh, the link so you can. I'll send uh, you the Twitter once I find out what it's called. <laughs> I know what it's called, but <laughs> you can find it. 